Good afternoon. This is on a Sunday afternoon, uh, February the 3rd, 2018. I'm recording this video and hopefully to uh, either upload it to YouTube or something of this nature. Um, I wasn't able to go to church today because of... Uh, I hurt my leg, hurt my knee uh, this past Friday. And uh, I don't know, let's desire your prayers. My name's Brother Mike Keller. Uh, I sing the quartet, preach, and uh, saved a little, nearly 31 years ago. 31 years ago, coming up this uh, April the 6th. And uh, a little church on Bonner Springs, Kansas, under direction and pastorate of Brother well, Sandy Seba. There's a message I was going to preach today on the radio. And I'm going to preach it right now, and hopefully I'll get this thing uploaded and uh, technology is right where I can um, on uh, YouTube here after a little while. Apologize for the uh, if there's any technical problems or anything like that. I'm doing the best I can here with my limited ability of technology. I want to share with you a, a topic that, uh, if I had titled the message, it would be "Count It All Joy." That I want to. Uh, I'm gonna be in the Book of James, chapter number one, and some other uh, probably first. Peter also, uh, one in chapter five, also here as I go on with this message. I want to read a few verses here this morning, or this evening, at this time. James, a servant, uh, verse uh, chapter number one, verse one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy. If you fall, fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the triumph of your faith worketh patience. Let but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire or complete, wanting nothing. If you have lack of wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all man liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given to you. And I looked up that word of brideth, and uh, according to the dictionary there, that it uh, means to uh, to not uh, not uh, it, Peter's talking about, or James talking about there's so not being a coward. Uh, and it's like a, we use it as a, a military tribunal uh, if they find reproach or fault with a soldier. Uh, or censor or soldier. In other words, um, the uh, uh, apostle there is talking about, uh, or the, uh, the uh, James is talking about here that we're not to be uh, basically a coward when it comes to serving the Lord, but we are to be complete. Um, would ask for wisdom. Solomon asked for wisdom. Uh, is one thing he did ask for. He could have asked for many, many things, but God gave him wisdom. And uh, when he did that, then he increased his kingdom, increased his wealth, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, we're to, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. It giveth him, it giveth all men liberally, and not upbraideth or not cowardly, not being a coward about it. Uh, and it shall be given to him. But uh, let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Let the brother of low decree uh, rejoice in that he is exalted but the rich in that he is made low because 
as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. Now, there's not anything wrong with a rich man. Don't get me wrong. Uh, we work for folks that are well off and are rich. Uh, without those, we probably wouldn't have a job. Uh, most of us work for those that are well more uh, well off than we are, and uh, if you want to call them rich or whatever. But the Bible's telling us here as he talks about even the rich, it's easier to pass through the eye of a needle than it was to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not impossible when you study back the eye of a needle, which was just the doors uh, that were uh, the walls and you had encompassed about Jerusalem and wherever it might have been. They had the doors that opened up for chariots and what have you, but they also, instead of having to open up the doors, they had these small islets where just you could open up for people to come through. Now a camel could get down on his knees. It had been proven that a camel could get down on his knees and just kind of wiggle his way in that needle but it was nearly impossible for that camel to go through that eye and they call it the eye of the needle it's not going to thread and a lot of heard preachers say uh you know it's impossible for well it'd be impossible for a person to go through the eye of a physical needle sewing thread needle that's not what he's talking about he's talking about the eye of a needle through the doors of a gate that where the doors the gate opened up for people instead of the big doors opening up for the animals and the chariots and what have you it said that's right what he was talking about here in that passage of scripture and it's also here it's talking about that a man not be carried away or driven around like the like the waves and tossed through it to and fro and it says let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the bro brother of low degree rejoice, and he shall re be re exalted. The Lord said, that talked about in the Sermon of the Mount, said, uh, talked about the lowly and those that, uh, but those that trusted in him, even though they might be poor, one day they'll be exalted, amen, in the kingdom of God. And, uh, Let's skip on down to verse number 11 here. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. The Bible teaches us Lord, that, that it's just nearly impossible for the rich man, for a rich person, to enter in and to be saved. The Bible talked about Jesus said to the young rich ruler, said, you know, he asked him, said, what can he do to have eternal life? And he told him, he said, give up everything you got and follow me. And he said he was sorrowful of course, for these things that, you know, it, was, it made him, because he'd worked so hard and it, maybe he'd gotten it from his dad, I don't know. But anyhow, he had accumulated these things and he didn't want to give them up. So that's the reason he said it's just, just, just about impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not impossible, but it's almost impossible because most rich folks in the world today, especially in the great United States of America, will not give up their riches to follow the Lord. Money, the love of money, not money itself. I've heard that verse been misquoted many, many times that money is the root of all. No, dear friend, it is the love of money. If money is what drives you and uh, just as you're, you're, you're uh, dependent upon the making of money and getting a good job to allow you to be happy, you've missed the boat and uh, you're, you're, it's just about going to be impossible for you to understand and to enjoy the, thing, the spiritual things that the Lord Jesus Christ talks about in his word because your mind is is fixed upon making money and and doing all getting all this increase and everything and what are you going to do the bible says said that you know why build up this kind of stuff here that moth is going to eat away thieves going to break in and it's good the riches take away like fly, on the wings of eagle just flies away thieves break in steal it all one of these days it's going to burn up with favorite, fervent heat 
It ain't going to make a hill of beans one way or the other because it's going to be burnt up. The only thing that's going to matter in life, in your life, in my life, is what you've done for Jesus Christ and how, are you a born-again Christian today. That's the only thing that's going to matter here. And it talks about that series that says in verse number 10, and the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. And it went back up here, you know, talked about, said that as the sun comes out in the very next verse there, as the sun is no longer risen, uh, uh, no sooner risen with the burning heat. Talking about the sun coming up in the daytime. And when it gets so hot during the summertime, it'll wither the grass and the flowers fadeth. And, you know, they can't just stand heat without having the water. And the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. You're going to have to get a hold of that, dear friend. Nothing wrong with you having things. Amen. One preacher said one time, Brother Chuck Swindoll said, Nothing wrong with you having things. But it's when things have you, that's when the problem exists. The love of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Romans said, that which is not of faith is sin. So you can put all this together and you can say, well, so I don't believe that way. Well, I can just say to you that thus saith the Lord what his word says, not what Brother Mike Keller says, but what his word says. That's what's going to stand when the world's on fire and everything's burned up, amen, with fervent heat. That's what's going to stand. The Bible says his word shall never pass away, amen. It will stand forever. The Bible said in the book of Psalms that it's forever settled in heaven. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he, uh, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised him that love, promised them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Amen. The testing and the trials uh, is not, it, 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 they are from God. The testing and trials are from God, but the tempting is of the sight is Satan. When you look back and read the book of Job, God allowed Satan to tempt Job. He allowed these testings to come. Allows. He doesn't tempt. He allows Satan to tempt, to show, and to uh, see where you are at spiritually in your life. Amen. That's what happens, and that's how the order of things happen. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I don't know of anybody that has allowed sin to go on in their life on a continual basis that the, that the body has not deteriorated. They've ended up, most of the time, lose everything they've got uh, materially. They lose their families. They end up in jail. They end up... In drugs, alcohol, sin, sex, whatever you want to put out there. And I'm telling you, it is touching every family in the world today, especially these great United States, that, that is still, I believe, the greatest country on the face of the earth. But one man said one time, I believe it was Lincoln, said that when America fails to be great, said America is good because she's great. But when America fails to be great, she will fail to be good. All right, amen, that's where we're at just about today. We're just about to the point to where that we're failing to be good because we're not great anymore in the eyes of God and the eyes of the world. Now, thank God for President Trump there today that is trying to make America great again by allowing Christians and Christian ideas, what has formed this country, to get back, amen, to the Bible, back to prayer and believing in the power of prayer and that's what it's going to take, dear friend, is you to believe the book, to believe the Bible, amen, to get back and put your life and put Jesus Christ and Lord back into your life and quit going out here into the world and giving in to lust and allowing it to bring forth and to uh, uh, take root in your heart, in your life, and take over your mind, amen, and, uh, and not studying the Word of God and not being alone with Lord Jesus Christ. I myself struggle with it. 
You, dear friend, there's no one alive that doesn't struggle with the sin of lust, the sin of allowing Satan, whatever that is in your life, to come about and to take that joy, to rob that joy from you. One man said one time, said, this Bible will keep you from sin, or the sin will keep you from this Bible. And I believe that to be the truth today. There's no way in the world that if you stay in the book, if you stay on your knees today before the Lord Jesus Christ, pouring out your petitions and your heart to him, there is no way in the world that you will fall into sin and temptation if you will do what the Bible says, amen, and give all that back to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, when you are tempted. The Bible is very clear upon this subject here today, that if when we are tempted, when there's troubles and when there's thoughts comes to our mind, amen, that we are to give it over to the Lord. We're not to allow it to fester in our minds. Uh, when you, that's uh, when it says that lust, when it is, when it conceived, when it's conceived, amen. And when something has to, it has to be conceived before it is living. Now that's the, that's just the way it is. When life is conceived, when you give forth, a woman gives forth life, there has to be a seed inside her that the, the seed, the, uh, uh, the egg inside her that had the seed from the man that, that allowed it to be fertilized before life could be conceived. Same thing happens with sin. When the Bible tells us that when you, uh, when lust is conceived, uh, it's using the same thing as a baby being conceived. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The Bible tells us in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse number 4, I'll start there in verse number 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Number five, casting down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, dear friend, to the obedience of Christ. Amen. And number six said, having in readiness to re, uh, revenge all disobedience when your, dis when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. You need to understand that the Bible is true with its promises, but we are to give those nasty thoughts, those things that come into our mind over to the Lord, give it back to the Holy Spirit and say, Dear God in heaven, what I don't know where this come from. It had to come from Satan. It's not of me. I am a child of the king. Give it back to him. Allow him to put it under the blood, amen. Ask forgiveness of it. Uh, uh, and, and you know, it's something you don't have to ask forgiveness for having a thought. But it's what you do with that thought. It's what you've got to ask for. If you allow that sin in your life, amen, to come forth and take root in your heart, in your mind, to where that's what you think about all the time, amen. Whatever it may be, it may be women, it may be uh, if you just lust for for material things instead of, of the things of the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing people get saved and telling them about the Lord. Uh, our pastor touched on that this morning, that, the, you know, the book of uh, Revelation, it tells us there, he said to the church of Ephesus, he said, I have somewhat against you. He said, because you've left your first love. And he said, remember, therefore, from which they are fallen, repent, do the first works, amen. The first works is when you got saved. You had the love for the Word of God. You could not wait to study the Word of God. You could not wait to tell someone about Lord Jesus Christ and to see people get saved. He said, do the first works, or else I will come quickly and remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. It's very clear that what the Lord expects out of his people. He said that the servant must be found faithful. Amen. If you're not faithful, why are you not faithful? I can tell you why you're not faithful, dear friend. It's because you have done away. You have not picked up the word of God. You cannot live this Christian life apart from prayer and reading this blessed old book. Amen. There's no way. I can't do it. The most spiritual person in the world can't do it. My pastor can't do it. And you, dear friend, can't do it. There's no way without the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He said that he would be able to make all things known unto us, and therefore the scripture is to be made known, but we're to study them to show ourselves approved, a workman, rightly dividing the word of truth. What? So we'd not be ashamed. One place talked about said, at his appearing would be be ashamed. Dear friend, are you going to be ashamed at what you may be doing at Christ appearing to come back after the church? I hope not. And if you'll get in God's word and read it and study it and apply it to your life, I believe, dear friend, there's no way. Now, yes, you'll fall. You're going to say things. You're going to do things each and every day of your life that's ungodly. But the thing about it is, is if you know that you're wrong, right then and there, correct it. If you fall down before the Lord or just uh, if you're driving or whatever, if you're working, you know you've sinned, just close your eyes or just, or just whatever. Keep word and say, dear God, help me. I know I've sinned. Forgive me. And he said he would. He said he was faithful and just to forgive us of all sin. Amen. And that's what we've got to understand today. And it said, verse number 16, it says, Do not err, uh, err my, bro, uh, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, whom, with whom is no variance, neither shadow of turning. In other words, the Bible tells us that he's, he promised what he would do. He's not going to turn. He's not going to, he's not going to absolutely go back on anything that he promised you in his word that he would do. There's no more near revelation coming. Revelation is already finished in these 66 books of the Bible. Amen. If you'll study them, you'll have all the revelation that you will ever need. And that's the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. His coming back, what he expects of his saints to do. And the list goes on. Of his own will begot, uh, will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not righteousness of God. Get that, dear friend. For the wrath of man worketh not righteousness of God. I've got a little asterisk there and a marking outside of it that probably 30 years I put in this Bible, the key verse here. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. God will have his wrath poured about upon the unrighteous and the wicked one day. But it's not your job, dear friend, to pour out wrath upon the wicked and upon those that don't do the word of God. Now we are to hate sin. I guarantee, and I'm going to get into that. We are to hate sin. We are to hate the wickedness of people. Amen. We are to love the sinner and point them to Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. And here's where I wanted to get to today. And super uh, fruity. Uh, and I hope I pronounced that word right of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. I looked at that word here, superfluity, and the word is Peter speaking of the filth of the flesh. Amen. The, the defilement here preferred to seems, uh, seems, uh, to seems general and not special and common. That is, to the whole natural man the superabundance of overgrowth of evil will occupy the heart if not if care be not taken to the root if in other words if you hadn't took care of it and rooted out amen and the like of like the thorns of the parable of the sower in matthew thirteen seven, it said that it choked out the word some of it sold on rocky ground. Some of it sold on good ground. What was sold on good ground, said those that come by, and it was watered when the rains come, but that was sold upon the rocky ground. 
the waters came and washed it away because there was no way for it to take root. We are a man to allow with meekness the engrafted word, the pure word, to tend into our heart and our lives that we should be able to tell others about Christ, to tell others about what's, and if that has not happened in your life, you don't know what I'm talking about today. The Bible says the natural man does not be able to understand things of the spirit, for they're spiritually discerned. Amen. And it says, for if any be hearer of the word and not a doer, amen, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He that beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law and liberty and continueth therein, he being not for a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. And I want you to understand right there, <clears throat> one of the thing, key things, I want you to understand that verse, and being not a forgetful hearer of the word, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Are you not being blessed in your deeds? Are you not being blessed in your home? You're not being blessed in your marriage. You're not being blessed in your work and your finances and what have you. Now, we're all going to suffer, suffer truth through trouble finances, trouble in our families. I'm not talking about that. Troubles are going to come. The Bible tells us in the latter days, perilous times will come, or the grievous rough times. And I believe we're in those last days today. There's a lot of rough things, a lot of perilous, a lot of grievous things are going on in the world today. Families, uh, sons against uh, mothers and fathers, mothers and fathers against the sons and daughters. And the list goes on what the Bible tells us in the latter days would come. Amen. But I'm telling you, if you're a faithful here, but and, 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 uh, and don't forget what the Lord says in his word. I said, if any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. I don't know how to put it any clearer, any clearer than that. Dear friend, if you can't control your tongue, if it's okay with you to be around those that can't control their tongue, dear friend, there's something about your supposed salvation that doesn't resonate and bear witness with mine. Because when I was saved, do I have to work around those that have a filthy mouth? Yes, I do. I don't have to like it. And there's been times that I've told them so. There's been times I've had to leave where I'm at, go to another place and work, or to get my mind at that point in time and pray about it and ask God to allow me not to hear that kind of garbage and stuff. And I don't think as a Christian should laugh or wink at the sin that God calls sin in his word. Amen. You should not be double-tongued. You should not be double-minded. You should not uh, have your tongue to where it is unbridled and uh, just allowing uh, everything in the world to come into your life. That pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit to follow us, the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. The title of the message here said, Count it all joy. The Bible, Paul said, to, and the apostle said, to Count it all joy when you fall into divers or different temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let your patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, or the word is complete there, wanting nothing. If you lack of wisdom, the Bible says to ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave that is driven with the wind and tossed. But if you lack of wisdom, ask of him, uh, uh, let him ask of God that giveth all man liberally, unbraideth, or not cowardly asking, but coming boldly before the throne of God. Amen. And it shall be given him. 
or a close just a little bit hoping here and praying that the Lord will resonate in your life. The Holy Spirit will come to you at this point in time whenever you hear this message. And I hope that this is not the last time that I can pr uh, preach to you, that I cannot expound the Word of God, that I cannot give you the truth that the Holy Spirit has given me through His Word and of no private interpretation. No private, no, no extra prophecy, no kind of extra revelation, but from the Word of God. I ask today, if you hadn't trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, you would make that priority in your life today. The Bible tells us that whosoever, with repentant heart, in other words, if God is dealing with your heart right now, you feel that wooing and that drawing, that pounding in your chest, that you know that there's something in you that you don't have that you want. You have an unrest. You have never been spiritually born. You do not know this Lord Jesus Christ that I'm t talking about. If you feel the wooing and the drawing of the Holy Spirit of God, the Bible says that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's simple as that, plus nothing, nothing minus nothing. All you got to do, if you feel that way, is you call upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You just repent. Repent just means to simply to turn about face and turn away from your wicked ways of what you've done. That means to cry out to God, to tell Him you're sorry, 